What's up guys, it's CJ from SmartKTai.com and today we're benchmarking Sprint's Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch Smartphone. It's got Samsung's in-house 1.2 GHz dual-core Exynos processor, a full gig of RAM, a 4.52 inch Super AMOLED Plus display with WVGA resolution, and it's running Android 2.3.4 Gingerbread. We'll be using a variety of notable benchmarking utilities, uh, including Quadrant, as you can see here, we'll go ahead and start that off. We'll also be using CF Bench and Tutu Vilamo and the multi-touch test. In case you can't stick around for the entire duration of the video, as usual, I'll post the results in the description below. So let's continue on with Quadrant here. We're going up these steps now, going up the hallway. And you can see it's running very smoothly as expected. Should see some planets. There we go. and the final leg of the benchmark. Alright, so let's submit that and see what the score reads. Get a little bit closer on this. So 3,408. That's about what I get every time. Sometimes it goes to 3,500. Very, very nice score. Alright, set, set that back down here and we'll jump back home. Now let's go to CF Bench. And we'll start the full benchmark. Now this one may take a while so I'm gonna have to come back to it. And it looks like we have our results. Lots of data down here but what we want are the three scores at the bottom so Right here, native score of 11,229, Java score of 3,139, and overall score of 6,375. And zoom in on that for those of you who want to see how that compares to the other devices here. So it's about on par with the uh, regular Samsung Galaxy S2, and it's well ahead of the HTC Sensation. Motorola Atrix and the Google Nexus S. Alright, go back home and we'll go into Antutu. Go to test and start the test. Now this one takes quite a while as well so I'll show you a little bit of it throughout and then uh, pretty much fast forward through most of it so you can see the results. And it looks like the test is complete. So we get a total score of 5,650. And let's go ahead and pull up the score chart, see how it compares. About the same with the original Galaxy S2. It's above the Optimus 2X, better than the Moto Zoom tablet. And of course, we have these single core devices, Nexus S, Desire HD, about half the score. All right, so go back home and we'll pull up Vilamo. Now this one's a bit different. This one tests uh, strictly the web browsing performance. So we'll see how that stacks up. Again, if you're interested to see how this device compares to some of the uh, newer devices that are coming out, uh, we did benchmark uh, devices like the Droid X2, the Droid 3, and the Droid Bionic. So be sure to check out those videos on our YouTube channel. Now this one probably takes the longest out of all the tests we've done so far, so I'm probably going to skip through most of this.
All right, so here is our final score, 925. So I'll go ahead that and submit that in. And here is how it stacks up with other devices. We have the uh, Galaxy Tab 10.1 up at the top. Below our score, we have the Sensation, Evo 3D, MyTouch 4G, Desire S, Atrix 4G, Atrix 4G, Nexus One, and Galaxy S Vibrant. All right, jump back. And last but not least, we have the multi-touch test. Now this one will actually uh, tell us how many simultaneous touch points this display supports. Now I've tested this before and it does support all 10 fingers. I did try an 11th finger and that didn't work, but let's see if we can get this show up here. So you can see it recognizing the points. Let's see if we can get it to show the nine mark. There we go. So nine starts out at zero, so that's 10 total. Uh, lots of uh, simultaneous touch points, but you're not gonna need that, but I guess it's kind of cool. Uh, you really only need two for a pinch to zoom. Anyway, this was the benchmarking portion of our Epic 4G touch coverage. If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As usual, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.